Hi, I'm Jenny Sherbo with Jenny Sherbo Performance Horses, and today we're here to talk about round pins. So I purchased this round pin um, about 15 years ago because it has solid sides. Um, you can see all of the scratch marks all over here and here from the horses that hit the, the um, solid panel. And in my experience in the past, um, paneled round pins that are small that you're gonna work a horse on the fence and whatnot. Um, I've had some really bad wrecks of horses hurt their legs from going through the panels and especially hitting the post where the panel goes to the ground um, right there versus um, a solid walled panel. The problem with the solid walled panels is as you can see the dirt piles up against it really bad. So right here we have dug away the dirt from the side of the round pin um, and, and it's just a huge mountain all the way from there and you can see the dirt line right here and the dirt is usually right here and we pulled it away so you could see the dirt line. The dirt line if we pulled it all the way out it's about a foot up the wall. So this dirt goes out to the side about a foot. So the point of this discussion is why do we care? When the dirt goes up against the wall, it creates a bit of a ramp. And then when I lunge this horse out on that ramp, it takes the horse's shoulders angle and makes it drop in. So one of the things when we are training our horses is that we want to train them for their shoulder not to drop. And this is very contradictory to what we want to teach them right from the beginning. Another thing is, is a lot of young horses um, like this one here, have a really hard time holding a hind lead in a small space. And part of the reason is, is they drop their shoulder, which then kicks their hip out. And the way that the dirt is up on this pen promotes them to drop their shoulder. So I'm going to go ahead and, and lunge this horse around. Um, it also causes tripping. You can watch and see that this colt will trip every once in a while because he's running kind of on a hill. Uh, and he has a really hard time holding his hind lead, and that's partly because he drops his shoulder because there's such a mound on the wall. So I'll go ahead and lunge this horse around. He's shying a little bit of our camera over here, but you'll be able to see it on this wall over here. So right there he's at a lead and then he breaks down to the trot because he can't hold his lead. At a lead again. Still at a lead. And if one of the very first things I try to do is work on cadence, which is keeping them at the same speed and then falling out a lead consistently when they hit those, those ramps makes that cadence tough. Add a lead again. He's on the wrong lead in that hind end. His shoulders drop to the right side. You can see that his shoulder is in, and if you look at his top line, you can really tell that his shoulder is to the inside. Right there he held it, that was good. Add a lead again. So this is something that I'll fight on these horses. And then once I come in here and pull all this dirt off these walls every so often, then I don't find, find that I fight that hind lead quite as much. And I really think it's because their shoulder is able to sit up straight because they're not on that hill, which then kicks their hip out. But the other round pin that we're going to show you takes care of the problem for us. And instead of us having to manually drag this dirt, which is actually really hard because it's hard to get the tractor in here, then you have to, I, my husband actually had to make a special tool to pull all that dirt off. So it takes a lot of labor, need a special tool. Um, to be honest with you, it just doesn't get done enough. Um, so it's not fair to these horses that we don't want to teach them to drop that shoulder. 
We want to teach them a cadence, and they're constantly going and breaking because they're out of lead. And um, we always want to give these horses um, the benefit of the doubt, and having a nice flat surface is going to be a whole lot better than running at an angle. So now we're going to free lunge this horse. I lunged him on a rope, which is mainly what I do. Um, free lunging them, a lot of times they'll just go bang up on the fence and get hooked up. So I often um, lunge them on a line. I want them already start to bring their nose in a circle. But I'm going to go ahead and free lunge him just so that, that you can see him get caught up in the dirt mound pretty much. So he's already out of lead. He went over and hit that dirt mound. He's bouncing off the wall, up on the dirt mound, then runs off the dirt mound. Out of lead again. You hear him hitting the wall. Still out of lead, hitting the wall again. Running up the ramp right there. There, he finally changed back to his lead. Okay, so that's a prime example of what happens when you don't have him on the line and this horse fighting that, that dirt ramp. I'm going to go ahead and work this horse in this round pin, and what I want you guys to think about is um, as I lope him around, when I go to stop him to turn into the fence, this horse's back feet are actually going to spread out in that stop. And my concern is, is that I'm really going to watch where I stop him as, as far as the walls are concerned to make sure he has enough room to spread his feet and still get through the turn. This is solid walled, so this is one of those places that it takes care of worrying about that if he spread his leg, it could go through the rail on a regular pipe fence and really hurt my horse. Um, again, I, I try to stay off the rail a little bit because that big ramp is there and I know that my horse could trip. They've done it a million times to me. Um, so that's one reason why I do not like the solid walls. So it's good for some things and bad for others, but the other pin I'm gonna show you takes care of all of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this horse in here and then we'll go work him outside. So I could feel him as I'm loping, kind of like dropping his shoulder and running up and down the, the hill and the ranch. And if he was a younger horse, he could sure trip and fall down. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stop him and turn him. So when I stopped him, which I will do again, Notice that he spreads his hind legs. Again, I can feel him kind of going up and down these hills, dropping his shoulder a little bit when it really stands at an angle. Okay, so when he goes to spread his legs in that stop, he really spreads them out. And he also steps through with that front end And he's a really nice horse. I sure wouldn't want him to hit a front leg in a panel. Um, I, can't, I can't explain enough how regular pen panels can be dangerous. I've stopped them in a fence and had their leg hang up in the pipe that's going to the ground. And I've turned them into a fence and had a horse's front legs get tangled in the pipe. Um, just those regular panels are really scary. The problem with this is that the dirt pipe packs up there so bad. And also, if you have a spooky colt, because it's solid walled, if my dog is running on the other side of the panel or my kids are over there, they're making noise, but they can't see them, and the horse will tend to be spooky. So there's a few drawbacks to the solid walled. Also, the airflow, it can get pretty hot in here in the summer because the air doesn't come through here quite as much. Those would be the drawbacks. But the other pen, I feel like, alleviates all the drawbacks but keeps me safe because um, it doesn't have those lower panels and the pipe is on the outside. So we'll go check that out. Hi, welcome to Jenny Sherbo Performance Horses. We are back out here in the Built Better Livestock Panels by Dan Lewis. Um, 
This is a really great design of a panel that doesn't have the lower rail and also has the legs kicked to the outside instead of having them come straight to the ground. So if you look at this panel over here, most regular round pins would have a piece of pipe that comes straight down right here. And as you rode a horse around, if you went to stop, you'd really have to look out for those spots because your horse spreads their leg in, in, in the stop. But with this leg kicked back to the outside, it allows the horse to spread their legs and work in here. Also, it allows the dirt to go to, to the ridge to be on the outside so that the track stays level instead of being at a big rampy angle to help keep your horse's shoulder up straight which also helps them to hold their hind leg. So we don't have a lower panel here for a horse to get their leg caught in, and we don't have the post right here in the line for a horse to get it caught in. So as I ride around here, you can go ahead and see when a horse goes to turn through, I don't have to worry about him stepping into that lower, lower pipe. And also when I go to stop, and this horse spreads his legs in his stop, I don't have to worry about his leg going and hanging on a, on a panel. So for the camera's purposes, I'm just going to do a circle right out here in front. And as I jog this horse around, when I come over here and I go to turn into the fence, normally I would be looking for the post on the ground and trying to turn. Like normally I wouldn't turn here, I wouldn't turn here, I wouldn't turn here, wherever that leg was hitting the ground, I wouldn't turn. I would aim for the middle of the panel because I wouldn't want to be where the leg was. So if I was jogging along and I wanted to make a turn, I would turn at the middle of the panel. If I was jogging along, jogging along, jogging along, I would aim at the middle of that panel. That was a little short because I would be scared if I were to stop right here that my horse could hang a leg on that pipe on the ground. So what that means is that this horse has to be on my timing instead of me being able to look for where the horse is right. With this pen, I don't have to worry about that. I can just go around there in my circle and whenever my horse feels good, I can stop him and ask him to turn into the fence without worrying where that pipe of the fence is. So it's on the horse's timing and not my own. So I go around and I'm just feeling where my horse's stride is at and where his timing is at. And anywhere I want to, I can stop and turn into the fence. I don't have to be looking up, really thinking about doing it in a safe place because this entire pen is safe. So it alleviates me having to keep myself out of a wreck because there's no wreck to be had. Now we're going to go ahead and lunge a horse around in here and you'll see the difference in lunging um, in here versus the other pin. So this is the same colt that we lunged in the solid panel pin and we're going to come out here and lunge him out here. I'll lunge him on the line and also free lunge him so you can see um, that he won't be running into the panels like he was over there. This pin is a little bit bigger. This is a 50 foot round pin. The other one's a 40. Um, but I've worked this pen as a 40 and it works the same. It, it, the big deal is that it doesn't have that big dirt ramp on the sides that trips them up and sends them out. So we're going to go ahead and lunge him around. Good, so you see that he's holding his correct lead. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on the video, but this horse's shoulders are staying square instead of he's diving in a little bit, but that's what that other pen is, has taught him. It's not because he's, he's standing in the dirt wanting to dive. And right there he held his lead all the way. And the reason why it's easier for him to hold his lead is because he's not on that big angle. See, he's not banging into the fence. I'm not worried about him hitting a pipe. 
Good, so there he's staying on the correct lead. And you should have been able to see right there, and we can probably slow that down to slow motion. Is that when he's loping and he's right up against the rail, how his feet sometimes almost go under the rail. He has actual footprints, like right here. His footprint, the rail comes down like this, and his footprint is half outside the rail and half in the rail. So when they get on these circles, here's a really good footprint right here. Same thing, half inside the rail and half outside the rail. So when they're moving like this, their feet sometimes go to the outside, which is what I was talking about, the beauty of not having that leg there. Because I have had horses in the past just loping around just like he was that go and bang a leg on the bottom or go to stop and drag a leg into that pipe and cripple themselves, and it's just a shame. This is a brilliant des design, does not have that lower lower part, so their leg could go to the outside and push off. And when they go to stop and spread their legs, they're not going to go get hung up. That, that has a perfect angle to be just far enough to be out of the way. I hope you enjoyed our segment on round penning. Um, I hope that you will look into to these panels. I really think that there's something to them. Um, the main thing about a round pen is usually you're working young horses or problem horses and you're building their confidence and wanting good experiences and the last thing you want is for them to get hurt. Um, I really think that this is a safe pen. I like the 50 foot diameter, the 60 foot for riding of course, and the 40 foot is really good on the ground but a 50 is right there in the middle that I feel like I could ride them in here, I could work them on the ground in here and still get around. The way that these panels are built, not having that lower lower level panel and having those legs kick to the outside makes all the difference in the world with the ground, that it doesn't have that big dirt buildup on mound on the side, and also that I don't have to worry about my horse hanging a leg in that pipe that goes all the way to the ground. So I really hope that you will um, get a hold of Dan Lewis and look into these pens. And if you have any further questions, you can get, contact me at jennysherbo.com. Um, you can email me, text me, or give me a call, and my information will be on this video. Thank you. Inside, and then here are the legs that come to the outside instead of being right where my foot is. It's straight down where your horse can run into it. They're angled off to the side so that when your horse steps outside the pen or goes to stop and runs their leg outside the pen, they're not going to go and run into that pipe. This right here is a huge safety 